Now, I already knew that the Sportbrella XL was a very popular sunshade to bring to the kids' soccer games, but I really wanted to know if it was actually a good sun shelter to bring to the beach. I also wanted to know how well it would hold up on a windy day at the beach. Plus, I had a bunch more questions that were all Sportbrella related, so I thought, why not? I went online and picked one up for 46 bucks. Now the Sportbrella XL weighs around 9 pounds, which isn't bad at all for a sun shelter, but what really struck me right off the bat was its length. It's actually 62 inches long when it's all closed up. Just to give you some perspective here, I'm 6 foot 5. I couldn't get it to fit into a trunk of a Toyota Camry, no matter how I angled it, but it will fit in the back seat. And it does fit in the back of my two-door Wrangler when the back seat is folded up. So yeah, it is pretty long, but here's the trade-off. Look at how easy it is to set up the Sportbrella XL on a calm day at the beach when there's just a light breeze. All you have to do is just hold it up, slide the runner up the middle pole until it clicks into place, and that's it. The telescoping pole right here is cool because it can easily be adjusted to provide more shade or headroom under the umbrella. Eight steel ground stakes and three tie-down cords are provided to help stabilize it. I use the guy lines a few times, but I usually don't because they can be a trip hazard. Each of the two side flaps have these low pockets, which I suppose can be used for both storage and for holding sand to help weigh it down. Now I'm sure you already noticed that there's two mesh windows that can be zippered open and closed. They're both big enough so they can provide some really nice airflow. Now the front of the Sportbrella XL is about nine feet long which is two feet longer than the standard size Sportbrella. The canopy is made of 210D polyester, which offers UPF 50 plus sun protection. That of course is great because sun protection is definitely key for a sun shelter. But will it keep me dry if it rains? Or if someone decides to hose it down? Well, this fabric does repel water, which is great, but some water did make its way through the top air vent. So overall, I think it would be fine under some light rainfall. Now, I just want to add real quick that the Beach Gear Guy channel is all about setting up and reviewing beach gear. So if you love the beach as much as me and you're always looking for cool gear to bring to the beach, please consider subscribing to my Beach Gear Guy channel. I would love to have you along for the ride. I set up this Sportbrella XL as a conventional beach umbrella just to see what it would be like. To anchor it to the beach, I used the Diggit Beach Umbrella Sand Anchor. But unfortunately, the screw wasn't long enough to completely secure the middle pole, which is thinner than the typical beach umbrella pole. Now to compensate for this, I used the provided anchor cords to prevent it from spinning around. Now I'm happy to report that it all turned out okay. For my second setup, I used the feature beach umbrella sand anchor, which really did the trick. The Sportbrella XL does seem to work well when used as a normal beach umbrella, but I did find it to be a bit top heavy. Now a few days ago, the winds were blowing up to 15 miles per hour, so I grabbed the Sportbrella after it was locked away for an entire winter and took off to the beach. And as you can see here, the metal ground stakes were really corroded, so I decided to bring a package of these orange anchor screws, which turned out to be a great decision. Now the first time I set it up, I had the side of the Sportbrella facing the wind because I wanted the front to face the ocean. Well, it's all set up, but it really doesn't seem to like it very much. The side of the Sportbrella is really struggling against the wind. For the next setup, I wanted the back of the Sportbrella to face directly into the wind. Now the two stake down points in the back are 33 inches apart, so I had an idea. I took care of the screws first before I opened up the Sportbrella. Now, I know what you're thinking. Wouldn't this be easier with two people? Sure, it would certainly be more ideal if one person opened it up and held the tent in place and another person hooked up the metal grommets onto the stakes. But I'm flying solo here, and if the wind shifts on me and scoops up the Sportbrella, I may be literally flying solo here. There, success. Now the wind is actually pushing the Sportbrella down on the beach so I can take my time and stake the rest of it down. These strong yet very flexible ribs and stretchers are doing a great job holding up against the wind. And these rugged plastic tips prevent the ribs from busting out. 
Now the Sportbrella XL is not recommended for extreme wind conditions, but Mother Nature doesn't give a hoot about that. We all know that a calm day at the beach can suddenly turn into a windy day at the beach. And this setup right here gives me peace of mind knowing that the Sportbrella XL definitely has a fighting chance in 15 mile per hour winds. Thanks so much for watching this review video and being a part of my Beach Gear Guide channel.